Troy had a 15 point lead tied for their largest with a minute to go in the third quarter. ULM hits a couple of triples down the stretch. They cut it to nine heading into the fourth quarter of the great age of the WNIT. What's and, important, Jerry? Well, I think uh, ULM's got a little momentum going in here to the fourth quarter. They got an 18 point quarter there from Bradford. They've got to feel like if she can stay hot, they got a couple of threes from Gross. That's their two big scores. That they cut a lead uh, of 10 down to nine. I think they're going to be confident here that they can uh, have a chance here at the end of this game. Beautiful backdoor cut to Brianna Harris. Foul will be Hollings. And that's three on sticks. Hollings for Troy. Free throws coming up for Harris. What do you think? Yeah, take a look. Nice. Uh, she reached in from behind. May have gotten ball before the optics on that. The official is going to call that more often than not. Harris, two of one of two from the line. She hits the first. Harris had seven points in the first quarter. It's the first point since one of two. Trying to sneak in to get the rebound, and Harris commits the foul. Well, we'll check that. That might be. I thought it was Harris, but they may have reached. Got somebody reaching. No, it is going to be Harris. He's trying to read the hand signal. Second on Harris. Eight point lead for Troy. Well, let's see how ULM defends Sticks Hollins. Uh, she's the one that uh, allowed Troy to stay up against that 18 point quarter from Bradford. See if they find somebody else. And right away they go to Porsche, who gets a bucket. Double figures for Taishika Porsche to go along with seven rebounds. And they also try to get May May Hallman some looks from outside just to try to pull some of that defense off of Hollins down low. Now they're trying to double team Bradford every time she gets near the uh, top of the key. Manuel misses from 15. Rebound comes to Troy. Right now Troy uh, doesn't mind anybody other than uh, somebody wearing number two shooting the ball. Quick pass inside. Hollings off the front lip. No, and Harris rebounds. What's interesting, this is elemental basketball. They're going to get it into Bradford's hands. Harris looking for it. There it is. Quickly to Gross, who's had a good night. How do you stop two? That's what this all boils down yeah. to defensively. Yeah, they'll give anybody shots, and they'll try to keep uh, Gross run off the three-point line here. Bradford drives and gets to the free throw line. If they call that a shot, they may said it was a floor foul, and they do. It's the third foul against Wagner. All of them have come trying to guard exactly Hunter Bradford. Here in the fourth quarter, 8.41 to go. ULM will inbound with Gross. Also, Manuel Bradford, along with uh, Kaija Miles and Brianna Harris. Bradford drives, reverse layup. She's just got 24. A really wow. quick first step from Bradford, got by the defender immediately. Wagner feeds the right baseline. Daniel double teamed over there, trying to split the double team, and a timeout will be called by Troy to save the possession. 8.22 in the fourth. Troy by eight. ULM is not giving an inch here at Trojan Arena.
Troy leads it 67-59. Troy football coach Jared Parker with his defensive coordinator Dante Wright taking in the game. Both these schools with new head coaches. I know ULM's awfully excited about Brian Vincent. Inbounds it comes to Hollings. Operates against Harris and climbs the rim. Yes, uh, Brianna Harris did everything she could, but that little kind of a jump hook off of Hollings' uh, right arm, just impossible to defend. Gross air balls. ULM saves it in, but to Troy. Troy's got numbers here for Hallman. Waits for the trap hit to come through. Probably a smart idea. Hollings a triple on the way. Well short, and ULM will get it. Headed back inside of eight minutes. Ten point lead for Troy. We were talking earlier about the job ULM Athletics Director John Hartwell did and all the uh, all of their due diligence and arriving at Missy Bilderback as the yeah. women's basketball think, coach. And boy, has that paid off. I think there's no question he made a great hire with uh, Bilderback uh, already paying dividends. Well, here's Bradford. Wagner, there's going to be a foul. Two hands on the defender. If this is this is Wagner. Yeah, I believe so. Not Porsche. Yeah. Wagner got two hands on the small of her back. Even minimal contact in that scenario will get to the foul call. They'll bring uh, Ogman in. Or check that. This is Guyon, uh, Leilani Guyon, which means they're going to put her on Bradford and see if she can do anything. She has three already, so. It'll be a challenge for her. She's got a little more length than Bradford. Ten point lead for Troy. Bradford hoists one up off the mark. Rebounded offensively, Caitlin Manuel. Stick back from five feet, no. Trojans get the basketball back. Nia Daniel, a senior. Guyon shows the ball against Bradford. Mid-range jumper, no. Taken by Kaija Miles. Still a 10 point game. Harris on the loose, blocked beautifully by Hollings. And a foul will be called. Harris, I believe, came back and got her. Maybe Manuel. Manuel came back and looked like she reached in on it, but no, they're, they're going to charge it to Harris. No, you're right the first time. Okay. They changed. It is. All right, it is Manuel. Caitlin Manuel. Second foul against ULM. Troy's committed three. On the floor for Troy, leading it by 10. Guyon and Porsche, Hallman, Daniel, and this young lady here sticks Hollings. Guyon, triple on the way. Over gross. Wow. Boy, just great rotation on that ball from Guyon. They left her open, and she made them pay. 36% three point shooter, one of Troy's best on a club that struggles from the arc. 13 point lead for Troy. Bradford. Trying to answer, well off the mark. Rebound taken offensively, Miles. Sanaya Wells back in the game, playing what looks like on just one leg here. Dump down goes to Bradford against Guyon, right there with her, rebound off the miss. That's Hollings, who would be well served to slow it up, but instead right side, Hallman, mid-range baseline, no. Rebound tapped around, taken by Nunu Bradford. 13 point lead for Troy and Gross yeah. overshoots Kaija Miles on the break. And you know ULM's feeling a sense of urgency and Troy speeding them up even more and making it difficult. ULM, oh, for their last six attempts, haven't scored in two and a half minutes. And a lot of that's because Troy's getting them sped up a little bit because of that sense of urgency. Down by 13, they know they've got to get points and get them in a hurry. Running out of time, or at least on the verge of starting to run out of time. Inside of six minutes to go. Zay Dyer back in the game. Porsche's got it in her hands against Manuel. That's tough, tough for Porsche. And a foul. Manuel gave up the first step. Porsche's got a terrific first step. Well, it was the first step and then the stop. Watch her. She'll take that first step and then boom, put on the brakes. And Manuel's momentum just leaves her open. Two fouls and a quarter against Caitlin Manuel, the sixth woman of the year in the Sun Belt Conference. And one. Nope. It was Dyer the gets the board. Guy on. A four point trip for Troy. This is just brutal for ULM to miss an opportunity on their end with the turnover. 
and then give up four in the next possession to the Trojans. That's 50 rebounds for Troy in this game. Yeah, that's 50. really starting to be prominent, a 15 point different, a 15 rebound difference. Bradford bound to be winded, finds Manuel oh, for the layup. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's just a nice extra pass. Good movement without the basketball by Manuel. She gets rewarded. That's her first bucket. She averages 10 points a game. She's got five here tonight. Dyer, ball fakes against Harrison, throws it away. Nice anticipation, Nunu Bradford. And a quick two off the steal. Bradford has 26. She leads the team in steals and showed why there. Just great anticipation. One of the tops in the league in steals as well. 13 point game and another steal for Bradford. Two on one, she'll lay it up. Foul against Guyon. Bradford's got 28 back to back steals. And they're right back in it, down by 11. Shanda Rigby can't settle in just yet. Back-to-back -back steals by Bradford. Have gotten a couple of buckets, and now Bradford, interestingly enough here, Bradford, she goes to the free throw line with 28 points. If she hits this free throw, then for Bradford, it would be an all-time single-season ULM scoring record. We said if she got there, ULM would be in this game, and she's got a chance to uh, cut the lead even more. This game's far from over. Bradford, three of six from the line, a 77% shooter, and there's your all-time leading single season scorer for ULM. Bradford's got 29, Troy by 10. Back-to-back -back steals by Nunu. That's a no-no. <laughs> Porsche, you see a little bit more juice defensively. Harris Dyer feeds it back out and there's gonna be a traveling violation against Dyer, another Troy turnover. It was a good idea from Zay Dyer. She was trying to find Hallman on the wing because everything had collapsed to the paint, but she took the extra step and that's a stop for ULM. We bucket here. 
And that bench over there is going to get very excited. Backdoor cut. Bradford makes a nice catch. Operates against Wagner and got it. He's just not going to be denied. The other way. Augman. Troy three straight trips without a shot. Zay Dyer takes a shot right there that was not what they were looking for. Yeah, three straight trips without a shot and then a shot that they didn't need. Eight point game, 342 to go. Does ULM have enough? This is a mark to me of a really good coach where a team has that belief and they never quit and this ULM team has not quit. Wagner denies the entry pass as Harris tried to curl it in to Bradford. Coach Rigby got an answer now with her leading score. Sticks Hollins comes back in. She's got 20, but only two in the quarter. Dyer sits down, point by eight, 329 left. In regulation, ULM with 10 seconds to shoot. And Coach Bilger back, lots of timeout. I like the timeout because I think she understands how important this possession is. If she's able to score here, Cut this to a six point game with three and a half minutes to go. She knows that that belief is going to accelerate even more along her bench. So this is an important offensive trip for the Warhawks. Her star player, Nuno Bradford, 5'8 senior, Mobile, Alabama, transferred in from Clemson, is averaging 19 points a game. She has 31 in this one after scoring four points in the first quarter. She scored 27 cents and the ball, this play, whatever they're talking about, it's going to be well ultimately getting into the hands of number two. They want it in Bradford's hand, but don't be surprised if Troy collapses as they try to find Gross on the wing, but Gross is not in there. So this is going to be all Bradford here. They're going to try to set a screen somewhere to get her an open look. Bradford on the opposite low blocks on the baseline out of bounds goes off a double screen now back again nice catch down low and she misses the shot Boy, that was well designed though. Yep. she got it in tight Troy comes away with it though 320 left an eight point lead showing the ball is Hollings a little runner way short taken by Porsche to stick it back that is what Porsche does so well and that's a that's a gut punch for ULM because they missed the opportunity to score. Porsche gets a bucket, pushes what could have been a six point difference back to 10. Three minutes to go. 10 point deficit for ULM. Off a weave. Wells will take a jumper and will hit. Sanaya Wells, that's her first basket. Yeah, that's been a big missing piece for uh, Coach uh, Builder back there is Wells who Averages 10 a game just now with her first points. Hollings can't answer. Battle for the rebound. It's off of ULM. Brianna Harris doesn't they, think so. Yeah, they may look at this one. They Harris say is, they saw it cleanly. Harris is asking where the foul call was. Out comes Manuel, in comes Gross for outside shooting. 2.35 to go, Troy by eight. Lob goes to Porsche, cut off, and the jumper in and out. Tapped long to Daniel. Daniel puts it right back up. That one's off the mark. Batted out long. It goes to Bradford, and a one out here for Brianna Harris. Got it. That's, again, just getting after it for ULM. That's Six-point game. That's just effort, and now they do have the six-point difference. And ULM's ever been in this. Look at Lauren Gross urging her teammates. Now Manuel comes in. Out will come Harris limping off on a yeah. bad right wheel. Matt Manuel more so for the defense yep. that she provides. 2.15 left. It's a 13-2 run for the Warhawks over the last three minutes. Troy taking a little air out of this basketball. Quickly down low. Nice catch. Hollings operates against Manuel. Jump. Hook. No. Manuel will send her to the line. That's number four. On the junior from Lawtel, Louisiana. Another and if, look. And if you're Troy, where do you go when you need something positive to happen on the offensive end? You go to Hollins. Jamia sticks Hollins. Doesn't get the bucket to fall, but gets to the line. And that's where... The Warhawks really have a tough time defending is Troy in the paint. Hollings has 21 points, 14 rebounds, 
By the way, they've out-rebended ULM 54 to 37 now. Two big ones for Jamia Hollings. They call her Sticks. Eight point hole for ULM to climb out of with two minutes left. Stepping into a three, Wells, no. Rebound comes to Hollings. What are you thinking, what are you looking at here for Troy? Well, I certainly don't blame Wells for taking that shot. She was wide open and she can make it for Troy. It's hard to say you want them to be deliberate because they don't do that well. Instead, they're gonna, good ball fake there from uh, May May. Hallman to draw the foul on Brad uh, on Wells, and that's going to be the end of the night for her. Just a tough night with fouls for Sonia Wells. Not sure that Wells was even going to be able to play. She didn't play in the Southern Miss game on Wednesday because of the hamstring. She tested it out before the game, and she gave it everything she had. Hallman hits the free throw. That's her first points of the half. Holman is a 78% free throw shooter. Three-time all Sun Belt Conference. And it may come down to this, Jerry. Back to a 10-point game, a minute 39 to go. Well, it's got to be a real sense of urgency. ULM's got to try to get a good look early. Wagner with four fouls. Bradford, they're going to force her to give it up. She gets it right back. 90 seconds to go. Wagner guards her with four. Bradford gets to the bucket, gets it blocked away by Hollings. And that may be the last gasp for ULM. Well, they had to score there. Gross will send Hallman to the line. Terrific block. Kind of like Zach Eady for Purdue late yesterday in the men's game against Tennessee's Dalton Connect. Boy. Great defensive stand against a great offensive player. Now Holman. May May May. averages 15. She's got 15. As I said, only free throws here in the second half, but these are free throws that are icing this game as she has made four for four. Well, then 111 left. Going by 12. Little Olivia Knight into the game with Wells having fouled out. Needs to be urgency. Against the zone, 13-footer, no good for Bradford. A tired shot. Yeah, she's just a tired player right now. ULM overplaying in the backcourt. Hallman is able to dribble through. And a foul against Gross will once again send the five-foot, three-inch senior, Mame Hallman, Back to the line for Troy. Crowd starting to sense it now. Hallman could just about put this one totally away right here. And I think just uh, going to be too big of a hill for ULM to climb. But what an effort from this group of players in the second half. These ladies never quit against some tremendous odds with the injuries and with the fouls. Troy, 50 seconds away from the Fab Four of the WNIT on Wednesday. And remember, Bear, we, you remember uh, Ja'Kayla Johnson went out with an injury and we never saw her again. She doesn't factor into the scoring at all. So. And she had had two straight 30-point games. She ended up playing just one minute in the game. That's a good yeah. point, Jerry. Two free throws for Hallman, 49 seconds to go. The winner here will play in the Fab Four against either Minnesota or Wyoming. We'll have to wait to see where that game will be played. The WNIT, they play on campus site, so we won't know until that game com is complete as to where the next game will be played. Could be here, but then again, could not be, although we've still got 50 seconds to go. Troy is up 14, and a timeout taken here. Just to kind of... Well, Gather your thoughts a little bit. It's taken by ULM trying to get yeah. something cooked up. And you look at what ULM was able to do after that uh, third quarter play. They got this to a six-point game Good. with about four minutes to go. It was anybody's ball game at that point. Out of the Warhawk timeout. They have one left. Knight and Bradford. Harris, Manuel, 
And Charday Watkins, no Lauren Gross out here right now. She's at the scorer's table. Baseline Bradford. Now Harris. Knight will fire up a triple. Wow. Got it. What a shot by the little 5-3 guard. Only her seventh three-pointer in 45 attempts. Bradford had to foul immediately, and that'll send May May Hallman back to the line. Boy, they have she, been. she has been six of six here in the last minute and a half. Bradford had three fouls in the second quarter. They nursed Nunu along. She just now commits her that's fourth. A, that's a credit to her. She started the uh, third quarter with four points and three fouls, and she just now picked up her fourth foul. You know, people talk about Bradford and her, her game, her skills, her shooting ability, her ability to score. Not enough is being given to Nunu Bradford about her intelligence, her basketball IQ. She will this team down the stretch. 20 by 12, 35 seconds to go. Knight off of a screen, misses, and the rebound comes to Troy. Shot clock, just a fraction of a second difference and a foul in the backcourt will be against, little bit, will be against Olivia Knight. Troy will move to 22 and 11 overall and will play in the Fab Four, most likely on Wednesday against either Minnesota or Wyoming. Daniel gets the roll on the first. Daniel had the hot start for Troy. She's got 12, which is right at her average. She's also got eight assists in this game. And two big free throws. ULM will close out their most successful season in 19 years. Here, let me check that. I was looking at Wagner's numbers. Uh, Daniel doesn't have that many assists. It's Wagner's with all the assists. But Daniel has, has been a steady scorer in this ball game, and she helps Troy put this one away. ULM will see their first 20 win season since the 04 05 year come to a close here in the great eight of the WNIT. Well, if you're the ULM nation, should be very optimistic about their future for women's basketball under the guidance of Missy Bilderback. She's going to get out and she's going to recruit. And she's creating an environment of winning there very, very early. She's already shown everybody that they can win with women's basketball there. Bradford has it, shot clock dark. A contested three for Gross, way off the mark. And Troy can dribble it out. Listen to this crowd. The Troy Trojans are on their way to the Fab Four of the WNIT. What a ball game, boy. This was a tremendous ball game.